everybody, AmpReparGuy.com, 203-892-4119. So, I have to get back to work on the 6 meter amp. I have to make the plate choke, and some parts came on the other amps, and I have to unbox two more amps to uh, see what they need so I can get the parts ordered for those. So I'm going to make a quick video here. Uh, we're going to talk about anode caps for the 3500Z. Uh, I'm starting to see some ham amps come in from hams that are tricked into buying them. <clears throat> this is something concocted by the other group of people, you know, that uh, don't talk on ham. And uh, they actually do more harm than good, and I'll explain why. Uh, so here we have one. This is one of a few or more that I've seen. So their theory, I guess, is put it on the top of the tube, and now you can abuse the tube more. Because <laughs> uh, it somehow extracts the heat off of the internal plates, which it does not. So I have the iMac book here. This is the Bible. These are the specifications by the manufacturer for a tube. This is for a steel plate tube. Um, you know, the temp ratings might be a little higher. They're not going to be any lower on a uh, graphite tube. You know, these are newer. You know, they're, these, these were, um, they stopped making these a long time ago. So, um, let's go over what it says. So, first off, it, it tells you the, the maximum operating temperature. Let me try to zoom in here. One second. Trying to keep the camera nice and steady for you guys. So, hopefully you can read that right there. So, okay. So, the maximum operating temperature for the plate seal is 225 degrees Celsius. And then the base seal is 200 degrees Celsius. So, let's see that right there. Okay, so, I'll zoom out. This is the actual plate seal, and then these are the other seals down here, <coughs> okay? <coughs> so, 225 degrees Celsius, Celsius is 437 degrees Fahrenheit, and 200 degrees Celsius is 392 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm a little cheat cheat there. So. Next up here, every tube has cooling specifications, okay, for the amount of anode dissipation that you're, um, you know, operating at. So let's see, where would they be in here? Okay, here we go. So here are the anode specs, you know, for the cooling. Base to base to anode airflow. So certain tubes will have, you know, base to anode. You know, if you're pushing the air up around the anode or through, you know, if it's a ceramic tube, you know, through the radiator versus if you're drawing it from the top, you know, pulling it versus pushing it. So in this case, it's base to anode. So as if you had a cooling type socket where the sockets recessed and then the air can make its way through the floor the bottom uh, compartment is pressurized air comes up through the floor around the socket and then this touches the floor it's held in by clips the air is forced through the cavity between the chimney and the tube okay so if you have this anode cap on here like this it's not, you know, first off, it's impeding some airflow. Second, you're bringing the anode. I've seen situations where people have, you know, the taller cap, and they're bringing the anode dangerously close to ground potential. So you risk arcing 
uh, plate, you know, for the plate flashing from the, um, you know, pl the, the plate supply voltage flashing from the plate of the tube to ground. And also you're lengthening the connection between the anode back to the tank circuit. So you're, you could introduce parasitic, uh, parasitic issues and end up having, especially on the higher bands, a parasitic oscillation which can do damage, which could destroy the tube, could destroy the band switch, damage the air variable cap, you know, just create all sorts of problems. So, <clears throat> if you're running the tube within its specifications with the proper amount of airflow, there's no need to try to do anything crazy to try to get more out of it. It's, you know, the tube's rated for a certain amount of emissions. You cool it properly, run it properly, you won't have problems. I've seen other situations where people get them so hot that they melt the actual solder out of the pins. It just drops right out. So, by having that cap on the anode, you're not going to dissipate enough heat off of the internal plates to stop you from destroying the tube. This is a Chinese tube. This is all that you can buy nowadays. Uh, with these tubes, you know, you... Um, if you get it really hot, the, the common failure for these is a grid to filament short. So, you know, if, uh, if you're abusing it, that's normally how these end up failing. So, so my recommendation is stay away from these aftermarket anode caps. It's just a way for people to make money and anyone promoting them, uh, you know, just take, you know, the, the source for, you know, look at you know, whatever else they're trying to promote and, you know, uh, use your uh, best judgment. But, um, that's that. So, I always go by the book. If you follow the book, you follow the specifications, tube will last a long time. Oh, I've, I've also seen other situations where someone will have this anode cap on, like, let's say, an Ameritron AL80B. And, you know, they, they have the other style where, there are these big gaps in between. They'll have it up here. The blow, the fan is down here. Okay? So it's not even, the airflow isn't even passing by the endo connection. Out of all of the three 500 Z amps I've worked on, I've never, not once, ever seen a failure of the seal at the top of the tube, the anode seal, ever. So. Just some info there. Now I have to get back to work. I have the enamel wire to make the plate choke. And uh, lots to do today. Winter is almost here. <laughs> fun, fun. So I'll be jam-packed this winter. No more outside stuff. I'll be here working away. Here's a stock anode cap from a 3500Z. From a Heathkit SB220. Okay, so I'm gonna get back to work. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. AmpRepairGuy.com 203-892-4119 One thing I forgot to mention before so, tubes have a certain amount of inter-electrode capacitance between the different elements. And the way you can measure that is you take a capacitance meter, you can go from the plate to the grid, or you can look at the spec sheet, and it will change. You know, if you take a, especially a steel tube, like a 3CX3000 a you take a measurement on your wooden workbench, and then you put it in your amplifier, and now that the tube is closer to a wall, the capacitance value will actually go up a bit. So same theory here. So if you have a large chunk of metal up on top of the tube and you're bringing the anode closer to ground or you're increasing the surface area that the anode is seeing you know, to ground, you're actually increasing the capacitance value. And that capacitance value is actually in parallel with the C1 plate tune capacitor. So might be fine and dandy on the lower bands, but as you go up in frequency, if you're on 10 meters or 6 meters, that can end up presenting a problem because now you're going to have to subtract some of your 
total capacitance on your C1 side of your output network tuning uh, capacitor to uh, compensate for that increase in capacitance because of the new anode connection. So that's just another reason why, you know, it's just, <laughs> I, I don't get it. You know, I just see things like this. But um, I'm just trying to help people because, like I said, you can end up with issues associated with it. And uh, I've seen situations where there's a couple, six, you know, a few sixteenths of an inch between the anode con connection and the uh, uh, top cover for the RF deck. And, you know, it, where it's actually arc, you can, you know, where I've seen carbon marks. So, you know, please, uh, you know, the people who design the amplifiers are really smart, and I have not yet seen an anode cap that wasn't sufficient for the application that it was being used in. I've also seen these people selling anode caps for large tubes, like a, you know, a, a tube like a 3CX 3000A7, 3CX 10000A7, or 4CX, whatever, any, any you know, one with the, that would fit on any of the the large diameter uh, ceramic uh, tubes, you know, so I just, that I, I don't understand why, <laughs> I mean, it, 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 you know, I guess it's similar to someone buying um, uh, caps for your, your uh, valve stems on a car, maybe it, look, maybe, maybe it looks better, but it, it, it serves no, uh, you know, purpose, it doesn't help at all whatsoever, so you know when you had the the pin gets to a certain temperature and yeah that'll dissipate it but you're doing more harm than good and like I said 225 degrees Celsius for the the pin the plate uh, seal connection which is 437 degrees Fahrenheit if you're running the tube I'll say it one last time if you're running the tube within its specifications and you're cooling it properly you would never come close to that temperature so just wanted to touch on that and now I have to get to work. Catch you later. 73. AmpReperguy.com